Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today, we're gonna go over power cords. Now, why would we wanna go over power cords? These guys right here are the most common consumable that biomeds will run into. And that's right, power cords are a consumable. So what type of things are we looking for when we're looking for a good or bad power cord? Let's take a look. First off, I got this little guy right here. You can see based on the diameter, it's gonna be a smaller gauge, probably a 20, 24 gauge wire. It is a non-hospital grade plug. Now, a hospital grade plug, you can see, are much larger. See that green dot? That green dot certifies that it is an official hospital grade plug. No green dot on this guy. The reason it's larger is because it places the user's hand further from the pins when you're plugging and unplugging the item, which sometimes you'll be doing possibly with your hands wet. So you can see that there's an indent in the plugs. You can see these ones here all have kind of the same thing. It's a larger diameter plug, places your hand further away from the pins as you can see, and there's an indent usually so that you can get a good grab on it when you're plugging and unplugging. There's something else I want you guys to take a look at. If you see right down in there, right around the outer sheathing inside the molded plug, there is a brass fair rule that's crimped around it. And what that adds is extra strain and yank relief so it doesn't pull this outer sheathing away from the inner cords, which still happens, unfortunately. So that's the basics of hospital grade plugs, but each and every one of these has got us pluses and minuses. There are certain cords that are gonna be a huge plus for your department and they're gonna save you so much hassle. So let's go over the hospital grade plugs, which this one is not. This one here is one of the most common. It's clear, as you can see, it's clear at this end. This is a 60 degree C 60 degree centigrade rated cord. It's gonna be uh, probably about a 10 amp cord since it's similar to this one right here. You can see it's a 10 amp rated cord. These ones are okay for general medical equipment, but they're not ideal. I'll also see these plugged in the surgical tables and stuff like that, and that is not ideal. So we generally prefer to get the larger higher graded cords for general medical devices because you can never control where the user is going to plug them in. Yes, today it might be on an infusion pump, but tomorrow it could be on a patient heater or something like that. So these cords I would normally not recommend. They're only 10 amps. But there's also a couple other features on these cords that I want you to take a look at. The end of the cord that's gonna get damaged the most is the equipment end right here. So some cords you'll notice are gonna be very soft. This one here isn't at the moment, but if you squeeze it in a diagonal pattern, you'll see it deform and you can actually push around these pins. And what happens is when the cord's dangling in the back of a piece of equipment, without an under molding, which this one has, you can see it inside, see that white plastic? So it's molded over a white subframe and that white frame gives it rigidity and the outer edge gives it uh, basically your outer sheathing. But this one is an extremely firm cord and it's got the inner subframe, whereas this one here doesn't. You can actually see right into your copper pins. There's no subframe there. This one here will probably deform before this one. Now this one here, I don't suggest anyway, because this one here is only a 10 amp rated cord. It's good for general medical devices. Maybe if you can latch the cord down, something lighter, like maybe a little irrigation pump or something, but other than that, I wouldn't even recommend those cords. Let's take a look at some of these other ones. This one is a very unusual specimen. This is a Stryker brand cord. You can see it right there. So one of the cool things about this cord, I'm gonna to to do a little bit more research on. Yeah, it's got a hospital grade end. It's a nice thick cord. 
But take a look right here. See how far the pins come into the plug? They're almost near the end, which means you're going to get much better contact on this type of cord than on this one. Let's take a look at them side by side. You see how the striker cord, the pins, come almost all the way out. And these ones here are like a half a centimeter into the molding. You see that? So this one here, this type of cord is the one that we're going to have problems with when the cord starts moving around. Not only does it have not have that subframe molded into the cord, but the pins are way further down into the female IEC connector. Now this is an IEC connector. That means it's a standard and you can find them there's different ones there's 90 degree IEC connectors etc but get used to searching for IEC if you're looking for power cords or biomeds we got to use the correct terminology but this is a really interesting cord it's pretty rigid I mean it doesn't have the subframe injected into it uh, the plastic support but those pins are really far down into there. You're gonna have a lot of contact area. Now let's take a look at two of the excellent examples I have here. Now this one here is a Chinese cord and this one here, uh, let's see, what brand is this? This is a Hutech. Now we've seen these Hutechs on a bunch of devices and I have never had a problem with these cords. It's it's only a 60 degree C rated cord, so that's its temperature rating. But these cords have molding between the strain relief right here and the outer jacket. Like you try and separate it and you really can't. Because some of these cords, if I were to yank on it, now that striker cord is obviously going to be really good. These ones we have definitely had problems with separating. There's nothing maintaining the outer sheathing from the cord end. So when they're yanking on it, you'll see exposed conductors right here. This one right here, look how it's got this built-in area so that when the user grabs onto it to unplug it from the equipment, it's got a little bit of a grip. That's just a really good cord, Hutech. Now I also have this Chinese cord right here. Let's see, this is probably one of the best cords I've ever seen. It's Young Lee, Y-U-N-G, space L-I, Young Lee. Now let's take a look at what makes this such an excellent cord. Let's take a look here, just like the other cord, it's got a grip section on the female IEC connector. This cord is rated to 105 degrees C. See it right there? So it's got a much higher rating. It's a heavier duty cord. This one is a 14 gauge cord, 14 gauge. That's excellent. Let's take a look right here. When you try and separate the cord by kind of pulling on it, it is firmly molded to that strain relief right there. Very firmly. Got nice heavy duty pins. Some of them on some cords, you can actually squeeze these and separate them quite easily by hand. That tells you that it's a cheap copper. This one is a nickel plated copper. And then let's take a look finally at the last piece which is your female IEC. You can see the white plastic inner frame that's in there around the pins. And I try and squeeze it and you can't. It's a very durable cord. If I can find more of these, I am going to buy some more of these cords. This is an amazing cord. Now all these other ones, they're the most common ones that you're going to find. I have no idea this one probably came in on another piece of equipment. But I keep cords like this bundled up in bins so that they can be deployed quite quickly. And this one is just my favorite cord. As soon as I picked it up, I took notice of it and I was like, wow, that thing's amazing. So anyway guys, I will go ahead and leave the information on this cord in the description below. I don't imagine that this one is very expensive. Some of these, like this Hewlett cord, this one probably can be. And some of those, they just charge too much for what you get. This one, 14 gauge cord, very durable cord. This guy it should definitely belong on a durable piece of medical equipment. Thanks for watching guys. 
That is what I have for you about cords. Please take a notice. This piece right here is the single biggest piece to fail on medical equipment, either because the outer sheathing gets yanked out or because this gets deformed. And when it gets deformed, your copper pins will get spaced further out. And when they get spaced further out, you get intermittent connectivity to the equipment. And sometimes it'll melt and catch on fire because the device is still gonna wanna pull a certain amount of current and you're gonna have less surface area because those pins are separated in your female connector. So get the cords that have the plastic over-injected subframe like this one. It, it basically shrouds the pins and it makes the cord end more durable. So that's all I have for you guys. Please like this video and subscribe if you haven't. I'm going to have more videos for you very soon. So thanks for watching.